next to my list is Penn International, followed by the Russian Union of Journalists. Thank you very much. Dear friends, I'm coming from the world's largest prison for journalists called Turkey. At 5 o'clock this morning, they were arrested, another journalist, a friend of mine, a professor in economics, Mehmet Altan, accused of helping the coup plotters. We have a total of 120 journalists in prison, and during the first six months of the state of emergency, over 100 media outlets have been, had been closed, leaving 2,300 media workers without jobs. Rest of the media are either silent or pro-government. And I, I was one of the prisoners of thought seven, years, seven months ago. And I, I must say that Turkey has never been a paradise for journalists, but never, never been a hell like that. I must admit that this outcome is not a surprise for me since I've known the autocratic tendencies of Erdogan from the beginning. But what is surprising to me has been the policies of European governments and some European institutions. The refugee deal has functioned as a tool for Turkish government to silence the Europeans against its oppression. The European Commission has postponed the release of its annual progress report on Turkey just to protect Erdogan before the elections. We have learned afterwards that the Commission had, be tra had been threatened by Erdogan by blocking the agreement and by letting the refugees go into Europe. You can imagine our disappointment as the citizens of Jern Turkey who believed in Western values like democracy, human rights, press freedom, secularism, equality of men and women, rule of law. We understood sadly that Europe could easily sacrifice its, sacrifice its values for its daily interests. We understood sadly that Europe can prefer a stable Turkey instead of a democratic one. So I must admit that the media crackdown in Turkey is partly the result of European leaders' support. Neither millions of refugees nor us, journalists, deserve to be used in such a dirty bargain. We'll keep on fighting for so-called Western values, even if many Western governments had already lost them. I'd like to thank friends from institutions like Penn, RSF, IPI, Article 19, CPJ, Amnesty International, Freedom House, Human Rights Watch, for standing by, for, by, standing by us during these troubled years. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank, you. Thank you very much, Mr. Dunda. And we have uh, just been informed that uh, Chumhuriyet, your paper, has been given the uh, Right Livelihood Award, a very prestigious award, also known as the Alternative Nobel Prize.